I do, so I cast Dexterity Chase on myself and you. You can scrub it off. <laughs> Like, I that, kill that scamp left a mess, and <laughs> about maybe about a minute later, all of the bits of ichor and and gooey stuff that the scamp left are have disintegrated. They've they've just evaporated and turned into something else. Gone up to that otherworldly plane where where it lives happily by itself. And now it's going to watch their tails. Like it's got a and family, you know? I'm going to try to get something out of this Okay. Mom! And start reading the book. All right. You go upstairs and <laughs> you take this lamp upstairs with you in, in, in this inn. And as you're looking at it, you hear a knock at the door. In my bag, guess. When you open the door, you see a man standing pretty... He's head and shoulders above you. He's got dusky brown scent, skin with thick eyebrows, a little bit of beard. He's he got robes so cowling. He's got he's got a, a cowl and very thick robes on. What did you do with my scamp? My name is Batman. I'm for you. I need justice. Can I help you? Killed my scamp. <laughs> the one thing that you he's got different it. is that he has a <laughs> turban or headrest on that you've never seen the likes of before. Okay. You've heard of these people. Here. Some of them live in the deserts far to the north, others live in the deserts far to the west. He says, My name is Ahmed. <laughs> Sorry, Originality is not exactly what my what my culture is known for. We will bastardize everything in our name. Is he a dead terrorist? It's not a dead. No, he's, he's not. He's not dead. He's he's not. He's not a three foot tall mannequin or a marionette. At least he got the reference. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm dead. I kill you. I kill you. I kill you. He okay. says, "My name is Ahmed, as is many names of my countrymen, because." None of us. There's there's about 20 names total for men like me. I'll take your word for it. I understand <laughs> that there's something that is in your possession you have no idea about. Oh. There's quite a few things in my possession that I'm not so sure about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Having a friend like that is never really healthy. Do you understand? Oh, trust me, I got it. That's why they die young. <laughs> That's you got character sheets. Uh, the store does. I do. Oh, she does. I do. Okay. Oh, there's. I do. I do. I do. Because oh, I actually want to get in on this campaign. <laughs> Every third Sunday. Have fun. I missed it once. Oh, oh. I didn't roll it. Oh, there's. Oh, yeah, there's some. Oh, they're double. Like Make sure that those they're oh. not companion sheets. That they're oh. actual character sheets. I'm yeah. I have one to Phil as well, if in case he wants to. I'm not forcing Phil to do this, but I, I, I'm offering one to him as well. I don't know if I. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Hang I understand. When school comes, you've got commitment. One of you guys can be. Honest. I just don't want to fall behind. <laughs> Every third Sunday. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want you to fall behind either. Every third Sunday. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Every. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, since I got this job, yes. Oh, two, I see. Yeah. Two two weeks out of the month, or two weeks out of three, I'm I'm in the asshole of Texas. Where jail, right? Not jail. It's called Asherton. <laughs> Have you ever? It's called a- ass end of Texas. Yeah. The ass end of Texas. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Okay, so Ahmed, do you like it? It's gotta be pretty fulfilling. It, it pays well. It it pays well. That's are you a, are you doing a more advanced job? Or are you doing no, I. If my next Dude, two I, paychecks are the same, I, I seriously thought about going out and some doing some of those jobs, but um, it'd be hard to get established out there. Getting established is the hardest thing. Um, yeah. Once you get that, you're you're fine. You're golden. Uh, I'm going to school here in about two months. If everything continues to go as it is, go ahead. go ahead. I'll be paying about two grand for five days, and then once I get my certification for company man, pretty much. Companies will look at me and be like, "Can we pay you seven fifty a day?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." You can yeah, if you fun. must. And yeah. The, and obviously, the oil industry, many welders, and shit, right? Well, oh, welders, yeah. Lot, yeah, but if, if you, you if, really? if, if you, I actually wanted to, it's some of the hardest welding work you're ever going to do, but it's yeah, because I, I was I wanted to go to school for welding, and it's a for SVTU that's like 
$28,000 for like a fucking 10 month course. It's, it's worth it. Yeah. How old are you? 12, 25, I'll be 26 next month. Oh, I was going to say. Happy birthday. Yeah. It's 46, right? Or is mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it's 496. Yeah. Drop the low. Oh, oh, shit. Five sixes. <laughs> oh, there's your first eight fucking teen, or is that a 17? 17. 17. Uh, okay. So. Ahmed tells you, says, well, the reason why I come to your abode tonight is that I was drawn here. Okay. Let's, um, uh, you have come into possession. May I come in your room? Sure. If I hear this. You, I'm alone, thank you. You poke your head out in the hallway. I'm alone, thank you. I'm from my room. You, across the hallway, you have a very tall man with a turban on, and he's got like a couple bags with him. At his feet, you see a, uh, like a, a little dog moving around from under his robes and then back over here. And as you kind of look at his dog, you, you feel like a magical aura come off of it. Actually, it looks like a Marino. I invite him inside. I look at you. It was ingenious. I'm fine. Mm. Scream if you need me. Oh, for sake. sake. <laughs> Ahmed says, thank you. He pulls the chair out, sits down. And he says, I was drawn here because there is a item in your position that is part of my existence. So it does come out with a lot okay. of that bullcrap drama, you know, the, the tween drama. Tween drama. Okay. Other From your pack, did, like, you well see you know, the pack scene. shift and move, and then the flap adjusts itself <laughs> as the lamp levitates out, and it sits between the two of you. I see you have possession of the lamp now. Yes. That is good. And that is bad, because there are things at home that require immediate attention, and there are other things that do not. Uh, knowledge planes? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, that's going to be a 12. Ackman looks at you and he says, there has been a war going on at some place in the multiverse at any given second for millennia. The one which I'm going to highlight to you, or the battles I'm going to highlight to you, are basically those that concern the world eater and those who try to stop him. We can call the Avengers. They can do it. I think no. we are the Avengers. Yeah. They say we are the Avengers. I'm Hawkeye. <laughs> Out of all the Avengers, you're going to play Hawkeye, really? <laughs> I'm the guy with the bow. That's my best chance. True. Scarlet Witch. She's Scarlet. Yeah, she's Scarlet Witch. Jump in this mug. Oh Wait, my god, that makes me Captain America. America. What did he hold, though? We need no. a barbarian. You are green. We need we need a barbarian. Mm. So he, like every time he rages, he goes Hulk. Okay. Yeah. So, hang on. Okay. So, Actually, a good example does he even look like the thing, would be the genie that we saw when we got the lamp? No. Master Chemist. Oh, that, that would does, very much yeah. be like okay. Hulk. Like, because the Hulk is well, just you an don't exactly look like the, the uh, genie we've met before. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Never. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I have been in and outside yeah. of that lamp. Numerous times. Sorry? And No, it's fine. What I must tell you today is that should you tamper with the things going on within the worlds of that lamp, you will go on a experience that will cause you a little bit of frustration, to say the least. Oh, trust me. I don't think anything in talk would happen the other day. <laughs> I was frozen for years. <laughs> Whatever it is, this lamp is one of the ways to the ancient city of brass. It's not a direct route, but there are no direct routes to the city of brass that you mortals can handle. I 
And once you're there, you may find yourself not wanting to leave. This world that we live in, very few legends speak of such places, but keep in mind that it doesn't need to be a popular legend for it to be a place in reality. The war between the Jinn and the Divas and the Div has been raging for millennia. Depending on what faction is currently in power, depends on what type of followers are active here. Right now, things are at a stalemate, a standstill. And soon, if they're not addressed, those good people will suffer. That lamp you have contains in spirit an entity, and he offers you subservience in the form of three wishes. Or, he will offer his services for a year and a day. I would not ask him to fulfill either the wishes nor your daily exploits for a full year. I would say, keep that. Put that in your back pocket. And whenever you're ready to tackle something huge, be ready to rub that lamp. Because the things that will change because of that lamp's existence. Everything changes. You're best off not to even ask the entity within the lamp to help you. Because he'll do his best to twist and pervert every word that falls out of your mouth. And crush it. And then destroy your hopes. And then fulfill all of your worst enemies' intimate desires. How is the lamp... Uh, hmm. You said that the, the lamp is a key to the ancient city of Brass. Mm -hmm. It is. How? It all is tied to the entity that's tied to the lamp. But if you ask him for travel, for the most part, he will offer you safe, uh, not so safe travel, but you'll get there. Because of your nature, you can't tell, go there your own self. Oh, well, you could if you're a very powerful wizard. But not a wizard. You're looking at problems if you go there because you have power groups that are in sway from the divs to the unseen. Fire giants. All manner of creatures within that area. So pretty much don't ask for Squat. Nothing. But if you must ask for something, be ready. Because you're going to get it. I just felt it would be best to warn you. I could feel the lamp pulsating up on your first on your person when you're downstairs, but I didn't want to look like a pervert and bother a beautiful woman. <laughs> nope, I'd rather follow her upstairs and go in her room. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is how uh, sylphs and all the half the jinn are created. No, that usually is a failed saving throw. At that point, he stands up, walks to the door, he says, Best of wishes in your travels. You too. He says, If you can afford to keep that lamp within your bloodline, it'd be probably the best. Hmm. Sure. He exits, he waves goodbye, and you see him and his little scrappy, scrappy dog exit this place. Mr. Misha the door behind him. Okay. What do you wish to do now? <laughs> you want to play with the lamp? You want to play with it? No, I'm going to go find a single man downstairs and have sex. Pretty easy to find. <laughs> most, Pretty easy to find. Most guys <laughs> in the world, both fantasy and reality, once you make your desires known and they figure it out, it's me. It's me she wants. Ha! Ha! And all of a sudden, they're on top of the world for their two and a half minutes. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I've got this. Ha-ha! 
I have endurance. Right. Keep going. Ha <laughs> <laughs> right. ha. Right. And then right after. And it's that's done, why endurance is been defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the what if, what if uh, dating or what if sex was like COD, and the hot chick appears and then she gets out of her army uniform and she t- her her <laughs> lingerie's on and she's got the guy in her grasp and he's there and he's already called for reinforcements, got the condom and uh, now he's you know doing it doing it and all of a sudden you can see his energy level dropping. She's like. Come on, stay in it, stay in it, stay in it, and he's he just passes out like a minute and a half done. So I'm gonna find a cute human and try and make a mini bread. I would go with a dwarf. Damn. If I were you, I'd go for a, a go for a dwarf. A dwarf. Your endurance is gonna be better. Ah, good point. Although it's gonna be funnier watching try to get in bed and out. Yeah, that's a gnome. Yeah. Right there. Trying to get in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my friend Mike, my friend Mike and Tommy, they both went to Vegas. They're both dwarfs. They're midgets, and uh, they were there, and they were planning on just blowing like their entire weekly salary on hookers. And uh, they didn't even like go to Bunny Ranch. They just stayed there in downtown LV, and uh, like all night, like Mike, he just he couldn't get it up. His penis was just flaccid gray meat. And the hooker that was with him, she wasn't really too skilled, and she's like, come on, do it, baby, come on, get it up for me, and it just wasn't working. And worse yet, you know, he's in bed, beautiful woman right next to him, and his penis is, like, not working. The anxiety, is, the pressure has killed him. Worse yet, in the next room, he hears Mikey, one, two, three, yeah! One, two, three, yeah! One, two, three, wee! I make sure the door's closed. And he uh, hears that, and like, it's just the worst. And so Tommy, the next day, he's eating his fucking breakfast of shame. The girls left the, the hotel room, and Mikey comes down, and Mikey looks like he's just, like, I had to swim through a bucket load of assholes. He's just <laughs> dragging. <laughs> Tommy's like, fuck you. And Mike's like, last night was terrible. And Tommy's like, your night, your night was terrible. My night was hell. I had gray lump meat and I had to listen to you, Mr. One, two, three. What is responds. The, the buddy's like, dude, I was trying to get in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. No, no, no. I, I think I'll stick with the human. Uh, there's plenty of cute, Christ. you know, young males there's, there's, in, yeah. in In Fairhill, there's available young, eager men. Attractive woman with a charisma of 19. Yep, pretty much. Uh, elf, sure. An I, elf woman of, yeah. I can, I can think of a million reasons, like oh, your gyrating you. ass on a pole. Let's go. <laughs> And you go to bed, and you enjoy yourself. Yes. I'll tell him in the morning what's going on. <laughs> right now. She, he, he hears it. Yeah. He <laughs> hears it. One, two, three. No, no, I think he's signed up the, uh, the after party. That too, I hear him leave. <laughs> you know, walk, meeting walk with a cute, a cute gin, one, two, gin, you know. Three. We're going to try and make one, a little two, grab. Three. Oh. <laughs> I so, may uh, like my child. I don't know. Chris. Yes, sir. My hotel room, or my, my in room is wrecked. <laughs> what? Why? Well, oh, no. I have endurance, and I took someone with me up there. What? <laughs> he's saying he's a Klingon. Oh. He has endurance. He has <laughs> as, big checks. As Keep long. <laughs> it was consensual. No, it's not even. It, <laughs> that wasn't even. You know, that funny, wasn't like even part of the equation. Uh, like, as, 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 let, let me just. Uh, the marriage the, tradition over there is they have to. Even though the women in Kyrg- Kyrgyzstan know cool. their fiance, know their, who their future husband's going to be, and they've already dated or whatever the fuck, they still quite literally, their own husband has to go to their house 
basically kidnap them yes. and take them to the chapel to marry them that day. So the day of the wedding, you're basically, you're, you have to go fucking steal your wife from her family. Basically. Yeah, and not eat her. It's the greatest thing. What? I want a name for him. Okay. Um, you you have a wrecked room now. Um, <laughs> what the? Well, let me you, let me just say this much. No matter what you might hear from locker room stories, you don't need much lube. <laughs> spit will do. You you can get away with spit. You can get away with spit. But I'm just gonna say, like, never use all four ounces of the of the container. That's for, not no. No. <laughs> no. Never. Never. And what's going to happen is that, like, if you decide to get brave and go on the back back nine of that golf course, you're going to be fine for a little while. And then something's going to happen, and you're going to... I feel like you're trying to tell it, me something. It popped out. You're, you're trying to tell Hold me on, something. Hold on, let me put... And then all of a sudden, from the back nine, you hear the golf course rumbling. <laughs> the way that the golf courses shouldn't rumble. There's a, there's a dark smell on the horizon. And then it explodes upon you like Mount Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius full of poo. Uh, <laughs> that's when your friend with a camera probably will become uh, useful <laughs> yeah. but it's it's God. don't ever never because the moment you get the back nine especially if you've eight in the last 24 hours oh it's bad <laughs> what are you talking about? Really? I know what you're talking about but why Seriously? are you going through Cause you said because you said your room is wrecked and whenever I Not hear in people that way. Oh, okay like the bed's broken, the chairs are broken. <laughs> the desk's broken. A harmless way, it's wrecked. Harmless way. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See that, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when they go around the whole house breaking shit. Yeah. Like that. Okay. All you had to do is say Mr. and Mrs. Smith, gonna, not not Tucker Max. Say, you know, for Ben, that, not that's the, actually colorful. Not the dark stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever do things the Tucker Max way. Bad, bad, bad. No. <laughs> oh, I love that. Book. Okay. So the next morning... Okay, the spells. book is better. The spells. <laughs> yes. So I mean... So you hear a fun things coming from her room. Yeah. Tough to concentrate. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Especially on me on the I'm other side. I'm correcting you on two. That's great. Especially with me on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> that you, uh... Nightmare. The second... All, all of the... Mm-hmm. First level spells that are commonly within the core rulebook. Okay. Two first level spells of your choice out of ultimate magic. <clears throat> Create pit, which is second level out of out of uh, advanced player's guide. That's in the other book too. Okay, Ultimate Magic? Yep. No, in the um, other book that we took. Okay. Um. Trying to think here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, complain to the innkeeper that the furniture was disturbing (laughs) us. Next time we'll just have some dwarves build some some steel bedding. <laughs> steel that'll that'll bend. Have it be rocks. <laughs> Adamantium. <laughs> That's talking about a gross amount of wealth needed for that. <laughs> Create treasure map. And fire breath. And then one additional fervor. Out of say level ACG. Build yourself like yeah. All third level enchantment spells. Just for from me, core rulebook. Okay. I got some ridiculous so rolls. Roll 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 I could go have have So you have four. I was seriously going to go with suspicious, yeah, but in this group. Man, before I can do time, no. Right. It looked fun, but no. <laughs> fourth level Have spell you ever detonate. I played a character. And fourth level spell dragon's breath. While being enlarged. 
And one fifth of a spell out of core rule book. I have to use the restroom real quick. I apologize. <laughs> If you can get to enough, uh, if you get to enough money, you can have someone permanent seed uh, a large person. So they're basically a giant. I I played a uh, sorcerer or barbarian a while back, who would literally just slap himself on the chest, a large person, and then rage. Splat, split a dragonian hat. Holding to give you one of the fours, I was like, this is two fours of the two, right? Some stuff like when you when you uh, go ahead and like plug him in where you want him, mm -hmm. he'll do some stuff. Usually, it rolls like two dice and then he adds kind of four or something. Like that. Sometimes, I don't know if it's that's not all the time. Percentile, yeah, yeah. not really before, not really after. Right, you roll percentile first, then you my other thought was mounted barbarian, but I just don't see us getting a chance to use it very often. A what? <laughs> Going with the mounted barbarian? Or mounted, yeah, the mounted. Who? Um, if you were a small race, like a gnome or a halfling, probably. I'd say probably yes, because you can get a riding dog, and you can, you know, watch be Mrs. McPickle and run <laughs> into the battle. Actually, if you take the feet uh, under... Uh, Undersized mount, you can end up with a, a small uh, mount as a small person. So honestly, this moment, I kind of just want to rub that lamp and be like, "Take me to the city." <laughs> as me, you look like, ridiculous. Me wants to do it, but it's a mount. What's going on with Aurora? I just want to just get the hell All right. edge. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. okay. Put those in the back for that. Sorry about the delay. There's ebbs and flows in game, I've noticed. Um, no matter what I do to try to pre-plan a game with have these events are going to take place, these are... I don't... I don't really ever see it always work like that. When you plan a game session, you you... Most people I know will orchestrate for three events to happen. They want three things to take place. And those things might not take place for the next six game sessions. You might have things go on that they'll be postponed. You might have somebody sit on for months. And your players, once they sit at the table, it's like going against a war against your enemy. The battlefield is secure. They never seem to want to they fight never, where you want to fight. They, they never want to go where you want them to go. Ever. Well, that's the problem with free rooms, though. Or like, this is technically a free roam. It's realm. really hard to do that even in adventure paths. Yeah, adventure paths are, are even worse because 
you have to follow a certain yeah structure if, if you do if you do something out of order very rarely do they give you enough wiggle room to where you can weave something back or you can double back and and take care of something the players missed we've been um, we've been listening to the uh, glass canyon podcast i recommend that if you just want to hear someone uh, a group of people play a game is it good yeah it's pretty good um and the they're doing the Dragon Slayer, uh, Giant Slayer. or Giant Slayer um, Adventure Pass, and you get to like halfway through the book, and it's just one like huge slog from that. And they start at level two on this huge slog, like you, they fight fifty people at least, like, and like only halfway through that do they even get to level three, and then yeah. The biggest problem I have with that is there's nowhere for the people to regain, you know, like, any type of, like, spells or, you know, because, yeah, it's just the way it's, it's designed. It's, it's, yeah. And the one that was before that, where the players were set in Numeria and it was science fantasy or fantasy science. Oh, uh, Iron Gods. Hmm, I like that one. Man, I looked at that. I want to play it so bad. It looks cool. It, like, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. I, I want to say this right now. Like, if you're going to run it as a GM, consider removing the chainsaw. <laughs> it is a busted freaking weapon. Imagine a two-handed weapon that rolls 3d6 mm-hmm. and you crit on 18s to 20s. And, I put it in the hand of and a I can give it to you And then put it in the hand of a fighter who takes vital strike feats. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was your fault. That was my fault. I made that character as the NPC, but that was ridiculously bull. Like, there, uh, he's uh, he's rolling on non crits. He's rolling twelve d uh uh uh, uh yeah. twelve d six plus thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a brutal weapon, especially since they get it in the second book. But you never get any more upgraded versions of it. Mm-mm. And the thing is, too, that it it's one it uses one energy per hour of use. So, I mean, and God, how many times it. are you going to be using it throughout the day? I mean, a total of, what, two? I mean, it's right, like... I mean, even if you go through a slip, uh, like a, like a... Yeah. Yeah. So the next morning she knocks on your door. Yep. <laughs> it's open. We need to talk. Yeah. So. Oh, your core book. Actually. Yeah, it's core book, I think. The, is uh, Maxos and uh, Spicy sharing a room? Yeah. Or. I've heard you're helpful. Yes. Uh, actually, no. Spicy's guys on the room. All right. So actually, before I go to his room, I go get Spicy. Okay. Uh, Maxos. Maxos is getting ready to leave. Okay, never mind. Maxos can stay. So I'm assuming um, I have to pay for Inquisitor the and Brett. They'll, find yeah. that. They'll tell you that here in about six hours. Because Ben's probably Ben's character's probably already working, right? Mm-hmm. So I fetch the Inquisitor, Brev, and Spicy, and go to his room. Okay. And go in, set the. Kind of have it like in my the lamp in my lap kind of thing, kind okay. of like keeping an eye on it. What? Uh, so last night I got a visitor. What happened? Technically, I got two visitors. But I was gonna say I thought I heard something. Else. Before that visitor. <laughs> and insert name here is a good local boy. Um, <laughs> no, the good local girl I found was not. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat orc babies, okay? Okay. <sighs> Sheesh, eat one halfling once. And everyone's up in arms. Anyway, so a weird guy came to my door before the local boy. Um, dressed weird, had this weird little dog with him. Well, he said he found me because of the lamp. That he was connected to the lamp. What lamp? This one. What you get happening? Well, 
it kind of got put into the Inquisitor, the Inquisitor who's here, possession, and now it's in my possession, apparently I'm the owner of the lamp now. But anyway, so inside is a magic, a mis magical being called a genie. <sighs> Calm down. Okay, so long story short, <laughs> actually tell me not to use it. Okay. But it could take us, if we wish, to the ancient city of Brass. Looking at Spicy, who's the oldest what, of us. What would you be doing? Probably playing pranks on people. Okay. When you're out there playing pranks on people. Okay. With the local, you know, children. You don't know this. <laughs> They'll recognize you only for the fact your hair color is still a little different, but you've got the same dimensions of most human, human kids. But I was joking, but, you know. Um, so she fills him in on, you know, about the war and... X, Y, Z, and that the lamp, the person, the, the, the being in the lamp can take us there if we wish. What's in the city of Brass? <sighs> so I have no freaking idea. Hang on. They're going through a war, though. They're going through, uh, planes, uh, 28. The city of Brass is located on the plane of fire. 32. At this location, for millennia, the Sultan, or the Grand Sultan, has held sway. Only recently have things been in flux, where numerous other power factions are struggling to take over the city. None of the competing factions are known for their humility or kindness. So what would benefit us by going to the city of Brass? Did you love all of us in the yeah, so Aurora conversation? So when you drop your yeah. dog, well, weren't you saying you needed some place to take her that wasn't on this plane? Oh, it's a good thought. And she is a, if I remember correctly, a dragon yeah, sorcerer. Yeah, she's part dragonish, I think. What dragon? Yeah, uh, red, black, green. Think good. Fire. Purple. Red. Gold. Yes. <laughs> Gold. Well, it took you a while to get to the color of her scales. It's <laughs> <laughs> like red, green, gold. I don't know. When a dragon, dragon's a dragon, they're all... So wouldn't she thrive there? Yeah. Except for the chaotic evil of the uh, queen. Yeah. Mm. It's not exactly a safe place you want to put somebody that's needing to recover from having their mind visited for, you know, constant stay of months on end by an alien intelligence. I wasn't saying it was perfect. And this is spicy saying this, I'm assuming? Or someone else? No. Yeah. It'd be you. What? It'd be you saying this. Spicy would be going, no, no. That's what I was, never mind. I guys are sticking to, uh... There's other planes out there. Thanks, Bruce, for going the way I was thinking. There's other places you could put her out there. How do we get to those places? Uh, the small plane shift. Or you make contact with a very nice and powerful entity from across the plains, and he'll bring you. I... That never works out. It's usually something evil, and they usually enslave you. <laughs> and offer something that will probably never work. The best thing I can possibly think of is, uh, I'm not there, so I can't help you guys. Well, I'm just explaining what it is. Yeah. But it also sounds like there is a war that perhaps maybe we could help in. What about this well, area here where we grew up? What about this area here? I mean, a lot of us grew up in this area, and as much as we don't want to go in that god-awful pit in the ground... I don't want to go in that pit in the ground. I keep getting hurt and having to pick out body pieces of you guys. But speak for yourself, buddy. Um, I've got to say that there's a hell of a lot of things here we need to fix too. I wasn't like saying to do it now. I'm just saying it's an option. Okay. Uh, it would be more adventure. But we still 
So what I'm hearing and I also figured that you, you know, lawful divine casters might want to take out some, you know, divs and evil creatures. Well, that'd be great yeah. if they were actually so, causing a problem for my uh, party members is being held against the for my theocracy. It's not really. But they're not. Now they are the against everything I believe, oh. but they aren't causing. Uh, so there, there's that. other problems on our horizon, like priests of Orcus and. Big yeah, hordes like undead. Like that. Yeah, that's that's something completely different. We've got a. You're with us. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's he's in the group yeah, that, right now. So yeah. Uh, so we have a way to get to a different plane that's having a war. It's a well, it's a standstill right now. Fire. The wars. Yeah, kind of. They were already standstill for long. You got about an hour. Now is that why? Is that person in that war? Gosh, no, I was chaotic good. I would totally tell you what to do, but you're not there either. I know that's She's, my point. The the person that was in our party is is being held here, but we need to take her somewhere else that she can't be tracked. <laughs> but we don't mm-hmm. think that the plane of fire is good for her because it's a chaotic evil planes. That's what he's saying, yeah. Yeah. Spicy was saying that it was a chaotic evil plane that it's not good for her to go to. You okay, honey? Yeah. Just let it go. And then there's the possibility of other planes that she can go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and Spicy said there's ways to get her to another plane, but we're not ready to go after her yet, considering our certain. If, if we were to go there, it might be a suicide mission to try to rescue her, which... Well, also, real quick, I under the assumption that the person holding her used to be or is a friend? I, I... Trying to remember... Uh, what's his name again? Um, yeah, the, 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 the... Whatever. Bill, the, Bill, 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 Maximus? Maximus. Yeah, not Maximus. Or, but Maximus. Villamus. I don't know. <laughs> that one guy. Yeah, yeah, him. The wizard. Uh, he, he has been a friend. Uh, and he, he said that he's holding Aurora for her own safety because she's a danger to this plane, to this world, because she can be so powerful. But it just kind of pains me that she's being held. It sounds like a bunch of crap that wizards say to themselves to make themselves feel better. I would like to point out that the wizard of the group is not here, so the only three arcane are non-wizards. <laughs> and two of which have been persecuted mercilessly. My kind are burned at the stake. So, yeah. I mean... I'm kind of for... I'm arcane. Yeah, that's why just... Yes, the three of us are uh-huh. arcane. Uh-huh. Two in the party whose classes... Because you, you, your class right, has been so burned at the stake. Yeah. Yep. Thinking that they're witches. And that's what Aurora was trying to show, is that sorcerers are not deadly. We can be just as powerful as wizards. Just because we have different blood type doesn't mean that we're different. Or that we're dangerous. That's why my character wants to Which is, I think, why she's dangerous. Because she wanted to change it. But I'm, I'm for, you know, going to get her. I just don't... What about for fire? What if we hire some adventurers? Oh. I know we masked a little bit of... The well, problem, yeah. though, is is the place was so heavily anti-magic yeah. that the three of us, well, no, the two of us... We don't take magic. The problem is, though, they're also going well, then it to know so who we are. It would be non-magic users against magic users, and I think we'd get our butts kicked. Because I use magic. And so does would Squeaky there, McSqueakers over here. Would there be a way to dispel the barriers? Uh, lots yeah. of mag- lots of magic and lots of dispels, but I can't do that. I don't think uh, Hendrick can do it either. Yeah. And definitely Hendrick. he can't. Whatever. <laughs> Hydric, Hendrick, Hedrick. Hydrant? Hydrant would work too. <laughs> Um, you have no idea what hey, my abilities are right now. Oh, I do know that spell magic is a something. second or third level spell. Yeah. Make it higher than zero is more. But. Okay, heads and shoots fire. You don't know what else. <laughs> Spicy, so we're talking about, you know. How is this one? 
planning on going to get Aurora. Eventually. Eventually. Getting a plan. I know that our other wizard or magician Maxos said that uh, we should wait. Put that on your back burner, I think is what he said. Yeah. Don't, don't like, say ever, I have nothing to do. You have yeah. plenty to do. Yeah. But, right now, are you in a position to challenge the authority that has that area? Nope. Well, what do you think that, do you, do you think that uh, Maximus, what was his first name again? Billius. Billius Maximus was being genuine when he said Aurora is a danger to this world? Do you think that's just what he was saying, just to kind of appease us? With the carry-on package she's got latched on her shoulders, she's a danger to everything in existence. Whatever that thing is, it's not friendly. Worse yet... So you're saying that that thing is influencing her to be bad? No, I'm saying that thing is... In, 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 in a chance to where it could be free and use her as a puppet, it will do everything it can to destroy the world around it, keeping her alive, summoning as much chaos as possible, and putting all the magical theories to test. And after it's assured, assured of itself as to what it can possibly do, it's going to do whatever it can to ensure its survival. But do you think we could kill that thing? Best of wishes. I think he was more asking if you believe that your old friend Aurora is a danger to the world, not the parasite feeding on her, but her herself. Oh, uh, boy. Well, listen. With arcane magic versus divine magic, divine magic, as much as people don't like it sometimes, that does come with a certain set of firewalls. You can't really be a lawful good cleric of fear slamming... An orphan with flame strike, you can't do that. But with arcane magic, if you decide that playground needs to burn, nothing's going to stop you from pulling the magic around you and then letting loose with your spell. It happened once, okay? <laughs> Let it go. Exactly my point. But I'm not a sorcerer, I'm a witch. I mean, I study my spells just like a wizard does. Actually, you, you're don't so you your your spirit animal companion. That thing is the thing that teaches you the capacities of your spells. That is the mentor you have. GM speaking in spicy voice. That is the thing. <laughs> that is the thing that is giving you your boundaries with what magic you have available. Not that wizards and witches are are too far different from each other. No, they're not. They are pretty close. Wizards have better versatility with what direct spells they can cast. Wizards have an edge with their bonus feats. Witches, witches have an element which must tie them to the world, their animal, which sadly, if that thing becomes a liability in combat or something takes great great pleasure in ridding you of it you are essentially a paperweight with legs yeah pretty much yes. <clears throat> that's the problem with witches and that's why you'll never see me play one ever what like I, said, I, 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 I hate the fucking animal companion that witches have i i never was the I guy it's too much of a burden to have to keep it safe the so entire fucking free. time yeah no, you get like you get captured, and they just see the animal companion, and they kill it. You're screwed. As the you have to figure out it's a companion, it just stays still. You can't regain the familiar with like you the can. twenty-four. Uh, you, can. You, you can. You have to spend a hundred gold per level. Ah, okay. As in, like you replacing a familiar. But then you lose all 200. the spells that were. In it's it's ungodly amount. That you had when you're broke and captured, probably not going to have it available. No. 